Hey, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the Corp Maths practice questions on indices. And this particular video focuses on students prepared for GCSE foundation maths. So it doesn't include any fractional indices, so it's just focused on negative indices. If you need any extra help in negative indices, if you go to Corp Maths and go to the videos and worksheet section and scroll down to video number 175, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on negative indices. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, question number one. Question number one says to find the value of 4 to the power of negative 2. So as you can see here, we've got a negative power. So when we've got a negative power, we put 1 over, and then we change the power to be positive. So rather than being 4 to the power of negative 2, we're going to do 4 to the power of 2. So we've just changed it from being negative 2 to 2. So we've got 1 over 4 squared. And then if you do 1 over 4 squared, if you work out what 4 squared is, that's 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So the answer would be 1 over 16. And that's it. So just to recap on that question, when we've got a negative power, we put 1 over, and then we just use the positive power. 4 squared is 16, so the answer is 1 over 16. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 2. So question number 2, we've been asked to work out the value of 3 to the power of negative 3. So we've got a negative power, so we're going to do 1 over, and then we're going to change it from being negative 3 to just 3. So 3 cubed. So we've just changed it from being a negative power by doing 1 over the positive power. And then 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is equal to 9, times 3 is equal to 27. So that means the answer would be 1 over 27, so 1 27th. And that's it. So when you've got a negative power, you put 1 over the positive power. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 3. So question number 3 says, Noah was asked to work out the value of 9 to the power of negative 2. And he says that since 9 squared is 81, that means that 9 to the power of negative 2 would be negative 81. Is Noah correct? And explain our answer. Well, no, he's not right. Because what he's done is he said, well, 9 squared is 81. So he said if there's a negative power, it should make the answer negative. But it wouldn't. It would put 1 over. It would do the reciprocal of it. So what we're going to do is let's actually work this out. If we had 9 to the power of negative 2, we would do 1 over 9 squared. We're going to do a positive power. So 1 over the positive power. And 9 squared is equal to 81. So the answer should be 1 over 81, not negative 81. So let's explain that. And that's it, I've just explained that Noah worked out 9 squared correctly, but he should have written 1 over 81 to get an answer of 1 over 81, rather than making it negative. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 4. So question number 4 says to write 7 to the power of negative 2 is a fraction. Okay, because it's got a negative power, it's going to be a fraction. We're going to do 1 over the positive power, so 1 over 7 squared. And 7 squared is 49, so it's 1 over 49. So that's our answer, 1 49th, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says to circle the value of two to the power of negative five. So let's work out what two to the power of negative five is. So it'll be one over, because it's got a negative power, we're going to do one over, two to the power of five. We're changing the power from being negative five to five. So we need to work out what two to the power of five is. So two times two times two times two times two. And two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. So that means our answer would be one over 32. So in terms of answers, it's not going to be negative 32. It's not going to be a tenth. It is going to be 1 over 32, like we've worked out, and it's not going to be negative 10. So the answer is 1 over 32. Okay, question number 6. Question number 6, we've been asked to work out 5 to the power of negative 3 is a fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as a fraction. So let's work it out. 5 to the power of negative 3. Well, that would be equal to 1 over, and then we're going to change the power from being negative to positive. So 5 cubed. Let's work out what 5 cubed is. 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So that means our answer would be 1 over 125, or 1 125th. So that's our answer, 1 over 125. We just done 1 over the positive power, and then work that out. Okay, let's take the next question, question number 7. Okay, question number 7 says, work out the value of 25 to the power of 0. So anything to the power of 0, except for 0, is equal to 1. So 25 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And that's important to learn that anything to the power of 0, except for 0, is equal to 1. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 8. So question number 8, we've been asked to work out the value of 6 to the power of negative 1. So it's got a negative power, so we're going to do 1 over the positive power, so 1 over 6 to the power of 1. And 6 to the power of 1 is just 6, so the answer is 1 sixth. So if you've got something to the power of negative 1, it just means find the reciprocal of it. So the reciprocal of 6 would be 1 sixth, 1 over 6, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 9. 
Okay, question number nine. We've been asked to evaluate or work out 10 to the power of negative four. So we're going to do one over 10 to the positive power. So one over 10 to the power of four. And let's work out what 10 to the power of four is. So that's going to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. So the answer would be 10,000. And actually, one thing to notice there is that if you get 10 to the power of 4, it's a 1 followed by four zeros. So that's it. So the answer is 1 over 10,000, 1 ten thousandth, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 10. So question number 10, we've been asked to work out 2 to the power of 4 times 4 to the power of negative 2. So let's work out each part separately. 2 to the power of 4. That's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So that'll be equal to 16. Then we've got 4 to the power of negative 2. Well, that's a negative power, so we're going to do 1 over the positive power, so 1 over 4 squared. 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, so it's 1 over 16. So we've got that 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 4 to the power of negative 2 will be 1 16th. So we've got 16 times 1 16th. So just to recap that, 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And 4 to the power of negative 2, well, 1 over 4 squared, and 1 over 4 squared is 1 16th. Now here we've got 16 times 1 16th. And just think, if you've got 16 sixteenths, you'd have a whole. So the answer would be 16 sixteenths, but that's equal to 1, because 16 over 16 is just 1. So the answer is 1, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12, we've been asked to work out 10 to the power of negative 2 and to give our answer as a decimal. So we've got a negative power here, so we're going to do 1 over the positive power. 10 squared is equal to 100, so we've got that's equal to 1 over 100. So 10 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 100. And then that's a fraction, we want to give our answer as a decimal. There's a few different approaches we could use here. We could just know that, well, you've got our units or our ones, we've got our decimal point, then we've got our tenths, and then we've got our hundredths. So if you had 1 over 100, that's 100th, which would be 0 0.01. So that's one way to consider it. Another way to consider it is if you just do 1 divided by 100, well, you divide it by 10 and by 10 again. 1 divided by 10 would be 0 0.1, and if you divide by 10 again, it would be 0 0.01. And that's it. So 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12, we're asked to simplify fully 7 times 7 to the power of 0 times 7 to the power of negative 1. Well, 7 is just 7, that's straightforward. 7 to the power of 0, well, anything to the power of 0, except for 0, is equal to 1. And then times by 7 to the power of negative 1. So let's work out what 7 to the power of negative 1 is. So there's a few ways to consider it. One way is if it's the power of negative 1, you just do the reciprocal of it, so just be 1 seventh. Or another way is, well, if you've got to the power of negative 1, you just do 1 over the positive power, 7 to the power of 1 would be 7, so that would be 1 seventh. So 7 to the power of negative 1 would be 1 over 7. So let's work this out. 7 times 1 is equal to 7, and then 7 times 1 seventh, so 7 lots of 1 seventh. So 7 to 1 seventh would be 7 sevenths, and 7 sevenths is a whole, so it's 1. So the answer is 1. OK, let's look at our next question. So question number 13, we've been asked to arrange in order from smallest to largest, 1 50th, 5 to the power of negative 2, 3 tenths, and 2 to the power of negative 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these two as fractions to begin with, and then if I need to, I'm going to then write them as decimals. So let's start off with 5 to the power of negative 2. So that would be, because we've got a negative power, we're going to do 1 over the positive power, so 1 over 5 squared. And 5 squared is 25, because 5 times 5 is 25, so that's going to be 1 over 25, or 1 25th. So 5 to the power of negative 2 is 1 25th. OK, and then we've got 2 to the power of negative 3, so we're going to do 1 over the positive power, so 1 over 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, so that's 1 over 8, or 1 eighth. OK, so we've now got them all as fractions, 1 50th, 1 25th, 3 tenths, and 1 eighth. And if we wanted to, we could write them all as decimals now, so divide the numerator by the denominator, so you could do 1 divided by 50, 1 divided by 25, 3 divided by 10, and 1 divided by 8. And I'll show you that approach in a second. But if I was asked to put these in order from smallest to largest, what I would do is I'd first of all start looking at the 1 8th, 1 25th, and 1 50th. Because I know that 1 8th is bigger than 1 25th. Because if we had 1 8th of a pizza, perhaps, that's going to be bigger than 1 25th of a pizza, which is going to be bigger than 1 50th of a pizza. So I know that that one's bigger than that one, and that's bigger than that one. But I need to see how 3 temps compares to the others. And then if I wanted to compare 3 temps to the others, I know that 3 3 tenths is 0.3, 3 tenths, and an eighth is half of a quarter, and a quarter is 0.25. So 3 tenths is actually bigger than a quarter, 
and an if is actually half of a quarter, so that means that three tenths is going to be the biggest. So in terms of from smallest to largest, the smallest one's going to be one fiftieth, and then it's going to be one twenty fifth, which is five to the power of negative two. Then it's going to be two to the power of negative three, which is one eighth, so two to the power of negative three. And the biggest one is three tenths, which is three tenths, and that's it. So that's one way to do that question, is to just actually use your common sense and say, well, one eighth is bigger than one twenty fifth, which is bigger than one fiftieth. And three tenths is 0 0.3, which is bigger than a quarter, and a quarter is bigger than an eighth, so that means that that's the biggest one. So that's one way. Another way is, as I said, to divide the numerators by the denominators. So we could do one divided by 50, so one divided by 50. We know it's a decimal number, so it's going to be 0 point something, so I'm going to put a decimal point and some zeros. So how many 50s go into 1? 0, remainder 1. How many 50s go into 10? 0, remainder 10. And how many 50s go into 100? That's 2. So 1 50th is 0 0.02. 125th, well, 125th would be, well, if we do 1 divided by 25 now, so how many 25s go into 1? 0 remainder 1. How many 25s go into 10? 0 remainder 10. And how many 25s go into 100? That'll be 4. So that would be 0 0.04. 3 tenths, as we talked about, is 0 0.3, or you could do 3 divided by 10. It's 0 0.3. And finally, 1 divided by 8. How many 8s go into 1? 0 remainder 1. How many 8s go into 10? That's 1 remainder 2. How many 8s go into 20? That's 2, which is 16, remainder 4. And how many 8s go into 40? That's 5. So that's 0 0.125. And then in terms of the smallest to largest, this is the smallest, then this one, then this one, and then the biggest is 0 0.3. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14 says W is greater than 1. So we could choose a number that's greater than 1 here for W, such as 2 or 10 or something like that. And we've been asked to write an order from smallest to largest, W to the power of 0, W cubed, W cubed over W to the power of 4, and W to the power of negative 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a certain value for W. I'm going to choose let W equal 10. So let's work out what 10 to the power of 0 is. Let's work out what 10 cubed is. Let's work out what 10 cubed divided by 10 to the power of 4 is. And let's work out what 10 to the power of negative 2 is. And then we can put them in order from smallest to largest. So 10 to the power of 0. Well, anything to the power of 0, except for 0, is 1. So that's going to be equal to 1. 10 cubed, well, 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. Then we've got 10 cubed divided by 10 to the power of 4. Well, if you're dividing things with the same base, you can take away the powers. So if we do 3 take away 4, that's going to be minus 1. So that's 10 to the power of minus 1. And then 10 to the power of minus 1 will be 1 over 10. And then finally, 10 to the power of negative 2 will be 1 over 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so that's equal to 100. So we've been asked to put these in order from smallest to largest. Well, the smallest one will be w to the power of negative 2, because that's equal to 100. And that's for whenever w is equal to 10, but it'll be the same for any other value of w greater than 1. So w to the power of negative 2 will be the smallest one. Then the next smallest was this one, which is 1 tenth, which is w to the power of 3 over w to the power of 4, because that's w to the power of negative 1, and that would be 1 over 10 in our case here. Then our next smallest was w to the power of 0, and then the largest was w cubed. And that's it. So if we have a number that's bigger than 1, greater than 1, this would be the order and from smallest to largest. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 15. Okay, question number 15, we've been asked to work out 6 squared multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 2. So 6 squared is easy, that's 6 times 6, that's 36. But in terms of w to the power of negative 2, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do 1 over the positive power. So we're going to do 1 over 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4, so we've got 36 times 1 over 4. So now we've got 36 times a quarter, so we could do 36 quarters, which is 36 over 4. Or you could just do it, instead of doing 36 times a quarter, you could do a quarter of 36. And a quarter of 36 is 9, so the answer is just 9. So you could just do, if you're timesing something by a quarter, you can do a quarter of it. So a quarter of 36 is 9. Or you could do 36 over 4, and whenever you do, do that division, you get 9 as well. So that's it. Okay, and let's look at our last question, question number 16. Now, question number 16 has got a few parts, and we've been asked to write the following numbers below in the form of 2 to the power of n. So we want to write it as 2 to the power of something. So 4. Well, we know that 4 is 2 squared, because that's 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. So we've written it in the form 2 squared. So 4 is 2 squared. Okay, 8. Well, remember that 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that's 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is equal to 8. Okay, next one. Our next one is a half, 1 over 2. 
Well, if you notice the two's on the denominator, we've got one over. So we're going to have two to the power of negative, because if you get a negative power, you put one over. And then you just want the two on the denominator, so it's going to be two to the power of negative one. Because if we had two to the power of negative one, we would do one over, and then two to the positive power, so that's two to the power of one, which is two. So a half is equal to two to the power of negative one. And then finally, our last part, part D, a quarter. So we want to write quarter as two to the power of something. Because it's one over, it's, it's going to be two to the negative power, because that'll give us our one over. But we want four in the denominator. And if you square the two, you get four. So it's going to be two to the power of negative two. And let's just check that. If we had two to the power of negative two, you would do one over, and then you do two squared, and two squared is four. So if we wanted to write this as two to the power of something, it'll be two to the power of negative two. And that's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the Corp Maths practice questions on negative indices. And it's focused on the students that are preparing for GCSE Foundation Maths. So those ones that just have negative indices. If you're preparing for GCSE Higher Maths, you may want to look at the practice questions that have negative and fractional indices. But this is just a set of questions that focus on negative indices. If you need any extra help in negative indices, if you go to Corp Maths and go to the videos and worksheet section and scroll down to video number 175, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on negative indices. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But I really, really hope you find this video useful. And if you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.